Hey guys, welcome back to the Western Vocal Channel of Sif Young Artist, where we nurture the artist in you. I'm Anirudh, and today is lesson number nine of our weekly Western Vocals Beginners Course. So, if you're joining us for the first time, I would like to tell you that this is a 101 of Western Vocals, and if you're a beginner singer and want to pick up this style. This course will take you through all the topics that you would need to cover to improve as a singer in this style of music. And every Monday we are live at 4 p.m. So this is lesson number nine. If you're joining us for the first time, you can go back and view the previous eight classes after this session. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, please put them down in the comment section below and we'll try our best to answer them for you guys. And if there are any topics or doubts that you guys want to learn about in the future lessons, we still have quite a few more months of this course. So any other topic that you guys are interested to learn, would like to know more about, please let us know and we'll do our best to cover those for you. So as I mentioned, we are live every Monday at four. And because a lot of new students are joining in each week, so especially in the past couple of weeks, we've seen a lot of new faces and a lot of new names commenting and asking us doubts. So what we thought, because we were done with eight lessons till now, which is pretty much one third of the course, the course is planned for 24 weeks. So eight classes makes it one third of the course. So we just thought today we can do a recap session, a quick recap of uh, all the main topics that we have covered till now. So if you're joining us for the first time today, or even if you have done the course with us, but have forgotten uh, all the topics and what you need to pay attention to, this will be a great recap for you. And then the last 10, 15 minutes, what we're gonna do is we have learned about three songs now, two main songs of the course and one body posture song, which we learned last week. So we will be singing along to all the three songs. So even if you're joining us for the first time, don't worry we have you covered, right? Okay then guys, so uh, before we move forward, I would like to remind you that the PDF and all the other material is available in the description below. And if you don't have the Sif Young Artist app yet, please get it, all the video content and all other downloadable content is available on the app as well. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Let's have some music and as all of you know, we will be doing warm-ups. Let's do the usual warm-ups quickly in a couple of minutes and then let's move to the two new warm-ups that we have learned. One is the breathing exercise and the second is the vocal fry, right? Okay, so let's start with the old warm-ups now. Yes. So the first one is the shoulder drop. Inhale. So as you inhale, slowly raise your shoulders up. Then as you exhale, Put your shoulders down suddenly, but make sure you don't hurt yourself. One more time. <sighs> right, great. So now the next thing to do is the neck exercises, right? So if you're joining us for the first time, uh, a lot of singers just do vocal warm ups, but there is a lot more to it. Uh, to singing than just your voice or your throat or your vocal cords, right? Any tension anywhere in your body will have an impact on your singing. So we make sure to warm up the whole body from your legs to your upper body, your neck, everything, right? Okay, so now the neck exercises, right to left and then up to down and then clockwise and anti-clockwise rotation. Let's start left to right. To down clockwise anti clockwise okay great so now the next one is the mouth exercise so try to open your mouth as wide as you can and then slowly close it so that all the muscles in your face and near your cheeks get relaxed. Okay, let's start. So make sure you close slowly. 
and when you are opening your mouth wide make sure you feel a light pull here right near your jaw and your lower cheek area so that that shows that you're actually stretching those muscles so one more time slowly close it great job okay now the next exercise is the tongue exercise so you need to put your tongue out and stretch it down as far as it goes and then slowly pull it back up so a lot of singers don't know that tongue tension is a really important uh, factor to tackle to make sure you're singing well so yeah let's get rid of that tongue tension if there is any so stretch your tongue downward as far as it goes and slowly retract it back right time okay great job now we just have a couple more exercises before we go into the breathing and the vocal fries so the first one as you know just take any note that you're comfortable with uh, which is part of your range and then start humming and maybe try and increase and decrease it in volume so for example taking a breath So I just took a note I was humming it I could feel the vibrations in my throat and in my face and near my nasal area as well and as I was humming it I was slowly increasing it in volume so that I sort of get to understand the dynamics of it and also it acts as a quick massage for my throat and in my mouth so one more time mm. Great. Now this is done. We move on to the lip trills. So lip trills basically hold your cheeks with a couple of fingers so that they just don't uh, disjoin when you're doing it. And with a burr sound, with a B, not a P, but a burr, you need to start low and then go high and then come back, right? So this is how it should sound. So I lost my breath there, no worries. I was doing it very slowly to show you guys. And then even if you lose your breath or even if there is that change, right? You switch to, uh, to that's completely fine. You can slowly learn to smoothen it out later. But for now, just finish the whole cycle, whatever it takes, right? So let me do it a little faster so that you understand. Right, got it. So from low to high and then back to low. One last time. Okay, great job. So I am feeling ticklish near my nose, then that's very good. That means you're doing it the right way. You need to feel that sensation of vibration and tickling near your nose. So Okay, so now on to the next two exercises, which we only started in the last class, which is extremely important. So one is the breathing. So let me just switch off the background music because I want you guys to pay close attention to this. The previous ones were old and you all knew how to do that. Okay, so the breathing exercise, as I've told you, and if you're new, let me show it to you again. This part, your diaphragmatic area near your stomach, both on the front, and at the sides should expand when you breathe in like this. I think you could see that, right? So that is when you know you're breathing correctly. So this exercise is very simple. Take a deep breath, let your diaphragm and your stomach area expand and then exhale by closing your teeth and then just letting air out slowly with a hissing sound between your teeth like this. And you can time yourself so that you know how long your breath is lasting. And also we have also spoken about uh, sort of learning where to take 
a breath, right? So I've mentioned in the last class that use punctuation. If you think a sentence is ending or there's a comma or there's a full stop, there you can know uh, you need to take a breath. And if the line is very fast and choppy, you need to take shorter breaths between uh, punctuations or between a few words. And if there is a lot of gap between the lines, you can take a long breath after each line. So breath control is very, very, very important for singers. So now let me uh, show this exercise to you. Inhale with your diaphragm expanding and exhale through your teeth and time yourself. Make sure you don't push out the air and try to sustain longer than you can. Just do what's comfortable for you. Just let out the air slowly, time yourself. And then as and when you do this more, you will hold in more breath. We call this uh, the breath economy or the air economy of a singer. So you can keep in more breath or air and use it as and when you need it, right? Okay, let's start, inhale. I could have gone on longer, but I'm stopping here. So you should start timing yourself as soon as you start exhaling. So last class, I think I reached about 52, 53 seconds. And we did get comments later that I could last only 10 seconds, 12 seconds, but it's completely fine. If this is new to you, you don't know yet how to control your breath. So keep working on this exercise and I'm sure within just a couple of weeks, you'll see a lot of improvement. You'll easily be able to reach 25 to 30 seconds within a month. So that's my guarantee. So just make sure you start working on this exercise because even in the other lives that I do, Feedback Fridays, a lot of you guys have a great voice, are following all the other basics pretty much correctly, but you're running out of breath. And once you run out of breath, uh, you also lose the beat, right? Because if you take a breath at unwanted spots and then you continue singing, you miss the rhythm and then it doesn't sound too good. So make sure you improve on this and you'll be able to definitely hold your breath for longer and use it as and when necessary in the song. Okay, now the last exercise is the vocal fry, which we spoke about last week. I told you it's like a massage for your vocal folds and your vocal cords, right? So what you do, basically you sigh in to a fry, a fry is that croaky, creaky sound at the bottom of your register. So it's very, low pitched, low range. It should sound like uh, I'm doing it a little louder now, but you should, it should be such that even someone sitting in the same room as you should not be able to hear it very clearly. That is how you should do it. But because this is a lesson, I'm doing it slightly louder so that you guys can hear it. But please also refer to a reel we recently put out where I have spoken in detail about the vocal fry, maybe that can help you as well. You can find the reel on the Sif Young Artist uh, YouTube and Instagram pages, right? Okay, so now let's do it. So you sigh in like, huh. So this is a vocal fry, let's do it again. <sighs> this can sound quite creepy if someone doesn't know that you're actually doing warm-ups. I've had my family suddenly be like, wait, what is that sound? <laughs> so don't worry about that. A lot of vocal exercises, as you might have realized by now, are not very people friendly, right? You can't do it in public. So no worries. It's not about how you look or how you sound. It's about what effect it has on your voice. So the uh, next thing I've told you about vocal fries before we wrap it up is that you can do similar to what you do with the lip trill, right? So you start low and then slowly try going high. Even if you, that crackle goes away, the creaky croaky sound of uh, that, it will go away naturally because you're not used to doing that in higher pitches. If it goes away, as I've told you, you can always slide back into the croak and then go higher, then slide back in. Say, let's show you. <sighs> mm. 
yeah i especially when i went way higher i kept losing it that's fine you can come back into the fry and then take it up so just take it step by step and trust me as i've always told you guys oh and we forgot the yawn technique the yawn technique is just forcing yourself to yawn a couple of times which opens up your throat so as i've told you if you just have 5 minutes before a performance or a recording the best three things you can do is the lip drill the yawn technique and the vocal fry right so great job guys now we have completed the warm up okay so now as i mentioned today is lesson number 9 if you want and today is just going to be a recap session and i'm going to give a quick recap in the next 15 minutes about all the main topics that we've covered until now not going too much into depth but just grazing the surface because we are done with this chunk the one third of the course and next we are going to be starting rhythm for singers and the session number 10 is not going to be next monday next monday is a break so 21st august they won't be alive and session number 10 will be back with the beginners course the second uh chapter of the beginners course from august 28th that is monday august 28th so please make note of that so you guys have two more weeks to get all these concepts clear work on all the three songs and be ready to tackle much more newer slightly harder but more exciting topics in the rhythm part for singers as well okay so great so now that uh, we have seen all of this let's quickly go to what all uh, topics that we have covered so guys firstly what we looked at was solfege notes right so for those of you who don't know and it sounds very uh, like new to you or alien to you all it means is basically the c major scale as we call it in an instrument if you play a guitar or a keyboard the c d e f g a b c that is basically one of the major scales the most simple major scale so that is the solfege pattern or for those of you who have been singing carnatic or hindustani music that's indian classical music it's a ri ga ma pa dha ni sa that is our notes right the swaras as we call it but in western vocals we call these the solfege notes solfege notes are basically do re mi fa so la ti do yeah if this is the first time you're hearing it don't worry we are also going to be looking at a song that we have covered in the first four sessions of the course uh, which we'll be doing again today so it's uh, it's a song to easily remember all the solfege notes right okay so do re mi fa so la ti do do ti la so fa mi re do so these are the forward and backward of the solfege notes so solfege notes is the essence or as we call it the major scale of most of the songs that we are learning and most songs that you hear in pop music contemporary music if it's in a major scale as we call it will use these seven notes so strengthening these seven notes and understanding the intervals between each of them say do re and then do to me and then do fa do so and all of these so it's very very important as a singer to know all the intervals from do to all the other notes so we have done initially in the course a lot of exercises uh to first strengthen your solfege notes then we've also done interval exercises where we're jumping we've done a lot of solfege patterns which you can go back and watch in session 2 session 3 and we've also done a lot of solfege skips right so from do to do and then do to t do to la all of these notes so understanding these intervals is very important as a singer and getting it at the correct pitch right so that is a uh, solfege notes so the next topic we covered was pitch and volume right so a lot of you uh, had a doubt on what exactly pitch is volume is so i won't go into the depth of it you can go to session 2 and 3 and have a look but essentially what pitch is is how low or high your note is so low 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 it's how much the frequency of the note is so uh you say this is a low frequency or a low pitch if you say, that's a high pitch say for example you say amitabh bachchan has a very low pitched voice right but at the same time someone like a michael jackson has a very high pitched voice so that is what pitch is it's about the note so a lower note or a higher note but what volume is is how loud or soft the note is 
So I can sing the same pitch uh, in a low volume, uh, which is soft, or uh, much louder, right? So it's essentially like if you have a phone and you're listening to music, you use the volume buttons plus or minus to increase the volume. So pitch is lower and higher and volume is softer and louder right so we have done a couple of simple exercises we have also looked at a lot of instruments right so on a guitar how uh, so we have done a great uh, interactive session i think that was session four you can go back and have a look where we uh, i showed you on the guitar how tuning works and how the thicker strings produce lower sound how the thinner strings produce higher sound and as you go higher up the string the pitch increases right similarly with the piano on the left side it's lower pitch on the right side, as you move right, the pitch slowly increases. But how hard you play will create a change in the volume. You play it softer, it's low volume. If you play it harder, it's uh, louder volume, right? Okay, so uh, and we also looked at uh, viola, cello and all these other examples. Usually more bass instruments, which are lower pitched, are bigger and thinner, smaller instruments usually produce a higher sound. Say for example, I showed you a ukulele that I had, which was lower, uh, a smaller instrument, but had a much higher pitch. And I also showed you my guitar, which was a bigger instrument, but the pitch was relatively lower, right? So it all depends on how much amplification is needed and so on. So similarly, all of our vocal cords also are different, right? So my vocal cords won't be similar to any of yours. Maybe there may be a few similarities, but they won't be the same. That means all of our voices are unique and you guys should know the limits of your voice. So what works and how thick your vocal cords are, how they interact, how they move, when you sing, how air passes through them, all these factors and whether you're a male or a female singer, all of these matters in the pitch you sing, right? So usually males sing lower and female singers sing higher. Of course, there are some ex uh, exceptions. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So and before we move on to vocal ranges, the quick exercises that I told you was do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. As you are going up the solfege notes, you're anyway increasing in pitch. You can try increasing the volume. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And as you come back, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi. So I just exaggerated and showed you how softer I can go and how higher I can go. And an easy way to understand pitch and volume is to sing the words, right? Uh, I can sing, I can take the same pitch and sing louder, 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 softer, 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 softer. Where I'm singing the same pitch, but I'm reducing volume and increasing volume louder is increasing softer and uh, for pitch it is volume was pretty much the same but I increased the pitch and then I came back down in pitch the second time around right Okay, now coming uh, to vocal ranges with the same topic. As I've told you, everyone has a different voice. Make sure you learn your range. So we have done, uh, uh, spoken a lot about vocal ranges and all of these in sessions five, six or six and seven. Please have a look. And in those sessions, I've told you that men are mainly categorized into three types, which is the bass singer, the baritone singer and the tenor singer. Bass is usually the lowest. Say Amitabh Bachchan has a bass voice, right? Baritone would be someone with a middle register voice. So uh, an example would be someone like uh, Troy Sivan or Justin Bieber or uh, John Mayer. A lot of these other singers. We have gone in depth, so please go have a look. And a tenor is someone who has a much higher pitched voice, someone like a Bruno Mars or Michael Jackson. So each of these has an approximate range. Say, for example, a tenor has a C3 to a C5 approx. It's not a hard and fast rule. There are different types of tenors, baritones, all of that. This is just a basic classification. So you guys can understand what uh, range you fall in so that knowing your range is very useful to pick the scale or the key of the song, how low you start and how high you can go, right? 
not everyone has the same range so you need to figure that out which is very very important and with uh, female singers is the same it's alto mezzo and soprano right alto is the lowest mezzo is the middle alto would be someone like a dua lipa mezzo would be someone like a taylor swift or a selena gomez and a soprano would be someone like an ariana grande or uh, asha bhosle ji for an indian example right okay so now that is uh, out of the way uh, how to figure out your range you can basically use an instrument or a piano app i've mentioned perfect piano so you can use that you can start playing from a low range and then keep going higher and sing any vowel in a clear way don't strain yourself and see if you feel like flipping from a ah to a ah, sound it's fine just flip and then figure out the point where you flip right so see from the lower to the higher what your range would be so that's something you can do and another thing we spoke about was singing in tune so you can sing in tune by using the same app or the instruments by playing a few notes trying to match the pitch and slowly learning songs by exactly trying to match the singer's pitch so if you have done this in detail as well please go refer to those videos now i think the last thing we covered before uh today's session was vocal health and body posture so the last two sessions were about that uh, in the seventh session i had told you guys a lot about your vocal health so i've given you dietary tips for example don't have too much dairy especially before a performance or recording don't have spicy foods sleep 8 hours drink at least 3 to 4 liters of water and all these uh, examples and we spoke about inflammation or vocal fatigue and how to get over that you shouldn't whisper you shouldn't talk or scream over loud music or loud sound so all these factors were mentioned please go back we also have a lot of reels and other smaller pieces of content on the youtube channel and our instagram page you can go check those out for additional info as well and yeah that's pretty much it so that was about vocal health and then we moved on to body posture right so for body posture we spoke about a lot of points like how your shoulders must be straight they must not be drooped and your back should be pretty straight your chest should be a little high but not strained and you must be looking straight not too high your neck shouldn't be uh overly looking up or down and then your knees shouldn't be locked your feet should be firmly on the ground your diaphragm and your stomach should be fairly flat and your whole body should be relaxed and we spoke about the importance of warm ups and breathing so the breathing exercise and the vocal fry we've already covered today so that was pretty much it right okay so now what we'll do guys for the last 12 or 15 minutes is that we're going to go backwards with all the songs right so now that i've ended the recap with the body posture please please go have a look at all the sessions make sure by the time we meet two weeks later you guys are thorough with all of this and know all the three songs and all the concepts are clear if not please comment and we'll try to clear them within the next two weeks so that when we move forward to uh, the rhythm and beat and time signatures and all these very interesting very important but less talked about topics for singers uh, many more singers we just say i mean it's melody is all that's important or the tune but there's a lot more to it in terms of rhythm and timing and the beat right so that's very very important so before we do that make sure you cover all of this now let's take the body posture song let me just grab my guitar so i am sharing the pdf of the lyrics with all of you and i'll be playing the guitar and we'll quickly cover the song so this was the newest song let me quickly split the screen for you okay i think you can see the lyrics now yeah so what i was talking about was the three songs lyrics is what we have in the recap pdf if you wanted all the songs we have done till now in the same pdf you can go ahead and download this one after today's session okay so the body posture song is basically let your body sing right so how we're going to work today is that we're going to do each song twice quickly so first time i'm going to play line by line and making you guys repeat each a line and then we're going to do it together for each one right so let's go backwards so the first one is let your body sing okay so this is the pitch okay 
Is your chin straight? Your turn. Are your shoulders relaxed? Is your spine all upright? Ready, set, and go with those abs. Okay, this is the worst chorus. Let your body sink. Let your body sink. You're done. Let your body sink from your head down to your toes. Right now we're moving to verse two. Let's just do verse two and three together, and then finish the chorus. So. Verse two is are your hands free and then breathe in. Let your lungs expand. Let's do verses two and three together now. Are your hands free? Your turn. Are your knees loose and calm? Are your feet apart? The ground. Now verse three. Breathe in. Let your lungs expand. Breathe out. Let them shrink and contract. Now take a look in the mirror. E E I O U sing nice and clear. So this I was just freestyling with this verse because uh, there are a lot of syllables. Uh, you can pretty much this song is mainly for you guys to understand the body posture, right? Uh, so I mean I was just changing the melody up a bit. So as long as you know the lyrics, it should be fine. But if you want to learn the exact melody, you can go back to the previous session or also watch. Uh, our other older beginners course with our uh, instructor Sharanya, who's done the same song uh, in her session, right? Okay, so let's take verse three again. Breathe in, let your lungs expand. Breathe out, let them shrink and contract. Now take a look in the mirror. A E I O, you sing nice and clear. Let your body sing. Let your body sing. Let your body sing from your head down to your toes. That's the song. So let's quickly take it throughout. So what we're going to do, we're going to just take the verses, the first verse and the second verse, and then we're ending with the chorus, right? So is your chin straight? That was. And are your hands free? That was. And yeah, from there we will do the verses one and two and then take the chorus ones. So this song is mainly for you guys to understand all the pointers of your body posture before you sing. So this can be a good warm up song as well. Is your chin straight? Are your shoulders relaxed? Is your spine all upright? Ready, set, and go with those abs. Are your hands free? Are your knees loose and calm? And then the next two lines. Are your feet apart? Plant them firm on the ground. Chorus. Let your body sing. Let your body sing. Let your body sing from your head down to your toes. Right, so you guys can check out the song in our older beginners course and also in our previous session, that's session number eight. Uh, and you can get the whole song. Now let's move forward, guys. So 
before that the song we learned was it's a beautiful day right so the verse so first let's quickly repeat the verse one and two after me and then the chorus then we'll let's do the whole song together okay Okay, this is the key. Mm, see the sun shining in the window. That's our key, okay? So let's start. See the sun shining in the window. Repeat. Time to start a new day. Can't you hear the songbirds singing? They're gonna sing out loud and say Now let's go to verse 2 Look around, there's a world of beauty From the mountains to the sea There's a wonder around every corner Waiting there for you and me. Okay, now the chorus is, as I've mentioned before, it's slightly higher in pitch. So for those of you who can, please sing it. If not, you can take it in a lower pitch. Or even if your voice cracks or switches to falsetto with ooh, sort of a sound, a lighter sound, it's completely fine. Okay, so the chorus is... So let's just end with the verse. There's a wonder around every corner Awaiting there for you and me And it's a beautiful day for running in the sun Your turn A beautiful day has just begun A beautiful day to do what I wanna do uh -huh. Yes, it's a beautiful day just to be alive A beautiful day, so glad that I've got A beautiful day, and I'd like to share it with I like to share it with you. I wanna share it with you. So that's how the song ends. So quickly, we don't have too much time. So let's just start from verse two, guys. Let's sing together verse two and the last chorus, right? Okay, one, two, three, start. So this is the key. Look around, there's a world of beauty. From the mountains to the sea. There's a wonder around every corner Awaiting there for you and me And it's a beautiful day for running in the sun A beautiful day has just begun A beautiful day to do what I wanna do uh -huh. Yes, it's a beautiful day just to be alive A beautiful day, so glad that I've got beautiful day that I like to share with you I like to share it with you I want to share it with you so great job that is how the song ends now let's quickly take a look at the solfege song so yeah the solfege note song which is do a dear as I've mentioned it's from the movie Sound of Music from 1965. It's a beautiful movie. If you're a singer or musician, you should definitely watch it. It's one of my favorite movies. And so this is a song from that, right? So it's an easy way to remember all our solfege notes. So they've likened each note to uh, something that we're familiar with. So a do is a female deer, a ray is a ray of sun, right? So a drop of golden sun. Me is a name you call yourself. So me is a name I call myself. You refer to yourself as me and far 
uh, far is connected to far, which is a long way to run. So is SEW, the sewing thread, so a needle pulling thread. La, I don't think they found any word for that, so it's just a note to follow. So, and tea is uh, what we all drink. So tea is a drink with jam and bread, and that brings us back to dope, right? So the song, let's let's try. So let's follow, uh, just follow me with each line. So yeah, let me just show you. Hmm, okay. So this is do. We're taking it in a slightly lower key so both uh, boys and girls would be able to sing this this is in the key of a if anyone plays instruments right it's in a major okay and do so it is do a deer a female deer your turn ray a drop of golden sun way to run so I need a pulling thread la I know to follow so tea a drink with jam and bread That will bring us back to do oh, oh, oh. Right? And the end is Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do Okay, so once together And let's wrap up today's session Ready guys? This is Do, Do Remember the pitch Okay, let's start Do, a deer A female deer Ray, a drop of golden sun me a name I call myself Far, a long, long way to run So, I need a pulling thread La, I know to follow so Tea, a drink with jam and bread That will bring us back to Do oh, oh, oh. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do Okay, great job. Let me cut off the lyrics page for you guys so that you guys can see me again. Okay, guys, so that was our recap session, session number nine. Hope you all got a quick recap of what all we've covered in the past two months or eight weeks, right? So please go back, watch those, be prepared. As I mentioned, next Monday, we are not live. It's a break and We'll be back not on 21st August, which is a break, but on the 28th August, which is Monday at the same time, 4 p.m. So make sure you have all these concepts clear. Make sure to find all the content that we discussed in the description below and comment or ask any doubts that you need to and we'll make sure to answer them. So guys, happy practicing. Keep singing. I'll see you on 28th August. Until then, take care. Bye.